I think I'm Big Meech. Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover. Welcome back to Topic Tuesday. What up, squad? Mizzy World Entertainment is excited to bring back episode five of Topic Tuesday, where I'm going to be breaking down the street legacy of the man, the myth, the legend, Larry King, Larry Hoover. Welcome back. And I wanted to speak on the street legacy of Larry Hoover all because of one thing. The free Larry Hoover concert thrown in L.A. by Drake and Kanye. I had to look into the history of Larry Hoover to see why they were asking for his release. You get what I'm saying? Like, every every Larry Hoover documentary that I've seen, because I believe he had an American Gangster uh, episode when when BET was doing an American Gangster series and all that. And I remember they were just talking about how 4th of July would come by and South Side of Chicago was literally like a war zone. Because, you know, uh, the 4th of July, July is the seventh month of the year, and the seventh letter of the alphabet is G. And then the fourth, the fourth letter of the alphabet is D. So they just took that as their birthday, Gangster Disciples. You see what I'm saying? So 4th of July, they said it used to be a war zone. You used to hear bazookas going off in some of them projects on the south side. You feel what I'm saying? So it mind boggled me to see Kanye throwing a Free Larry Hoover concert. Now, don't get me wrong. I heard his son on Donda and everything. That's his son. That's Of course, you, you want your dad to come home. But let's get into the street legacy of Larry Hoover because it was very, very violent. So let's start at the beginning. Larry Hoover was born November 30th, 1950 in Jackson, Mississippi. Now, that might seem a little bit weird, but if we all retraced and like retract our ancestry, I'm pretty sure all of our ancestors came from somewhere down south. You did what I'm saying? It's just a simple fact that Larry Hoover started a very... You know, he was born very young. 1950, that's... That's back. You feel what I'm saying? So it's not surprising that he was born down south. He moved to Chicago. He and his family moved to Chicago when he was just four years old. But it didn't take him long at all to get acclimated to the northern Chicago lifestyle. By the time he's 13 years old, he's out in the streets running with the Supreme Gangsters, a, a street gang out there. You know what I'm saying? Committing small crimes like uh, thefts and muggings, doing little small stuff like that. But, of course, you know, when you're in the street, you either stay right there and just doing small petty crimes like thefts and muggings or you eventually graduate and of course you don't get the name of king harry off of stealing from pharmaceutical companies or robbing old ladies for their purses you get what i'm saying so eventually king larry moves up to the leader of the supreme gangsters you get what i'm saying shout out to those light-skinned larrys too because i got a cousin like y'all can't see my tattoos but my cousin bozak he got killed in the night in 1996 i believe Running Homicide Show Nav, you feel what I'm saying? Light skin brother, also named Larry, aka Bozak. Peace and Paradise to a street legend from Philly, from Somerville. I'm gonna do a Somerville hood shout out too, because a lot of people outside of Philly don't know what Somerville is. But shout out to my own cousin, Larry Bozak Harrison. You dig what I'm saying? But yeah, let's get back into Larry Hoover and Bob. I believe late 1960s, Larry Hoover is running the Supreme Gangsters. You feel what I'm saying? By the late 1960s, by around 1969, is that in the third? Larry Hoover is running Supreme Gangsters as a young boy. You feel what I'm saying? So as Larry Hoover becomes the leader of the Supreme Gangsters, they start to grow. You still got the Black Disciples out there. So you got the Supreme Gangsters out there, then you got the Black Disciples out there. And the Black Disciples are ran by David Barksdale. So King David, you had the three kings once the the black gangster disciples were formed. You feel what I'm saying? You had King Shorty, King Larry, and King David. You feel what I'm saying? So King David ran the black disciples, and then you had King Larry who was running the Supreme Gangsters. They form together and create the black gangster disciples. They don't last long. You feel what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken, uh, someone from the black disciples or uh, someone that was from the faction that started off as the Black Disciples, then went back to the Black Disciples, killed somebody from a faction that started off as the Supreme Gangsters, then moved to being the Gangster Disciples after the Black Gangster Disciples split up. You get what I'm saying? And then, shout out to uh to um Cooley High, because they depicted that like a mug in that one movie scene. Gangsters! That shit was like Disciples! That shit was King David and King Larry in that joint. You feel what I'm saying? That, 
the disciples, gangsters. You feel what I'm saying? But to move on, it doesn't last long. They split up, and eventually they go back to being rivals. But early in the 1970s, 1973 is when it explodes. You feel what I'm saying? It just booms because Larry Hoover is convicted for murder with another one of his henchmen, another gangster disciple for the murder of a drug dealer named William Young. William Young's name was called up with three other people, I believe, that were believed to have stolen drugs from the gangster disciples, I believe, like five days earlier. So they kidnap him, shoot him up, leave him in an alleyway. But then the, the actual killer and then Larry Hoover, who was the one that pressed play, who was the one that was calling every play. He was back there like Andy Reid. You fool what I'm saying? He gets convicted and the killer actually gets, the, the person who actually goes through with the play gets convicted. They both get 150 years to 200 years. This is just the beginning. Because in jail is where Larry Hoover laid his foundation to be what he is today. So, 1973, Larry Hoover is convicted to 150, 200 years in prison. He gets sent to a supermax prison. As soon, as soon as he gets in, he starts laying down the foundation. He starts protecting inmates in return for their loyalty and their devotion to the gangster disciples. That right there, everybody knows that the if you were ever in the streets, you know the jails run the streets because you're... If you're if you're a stand up dude without with no smut on your name in the streets, you're going to do time. And to, the easiest way to make that time go by is to be with a click that's running the outside or that's running the inside. So that's why the people that's running the inside mainly run the outside because it's like, hey, listen, bro, you you might be doing your thing on the outside, but when little man, when anybody from your team get locked up, you better pray for his booty hole. <laughs> You better pray for his life. You feel what I'm saying? You better pray for his sanity. You dig what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of dudes, that's why the streets know that the inside runs the outside. And Larry Ho Larry Hoover used that to his to his advantage. But as soon as he gets in there, he start, starts doing that. Then the warden starts to notice he can use him for, like, as a pawn to slow down some of the riots and the beefs that's going on in jail. Larry Hoover right there, bing! Uh, a light bulb goes off. Oh, I can portray myself as a person that's preaching positivity. He changed GD from the 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 acronym of GD from Gangster Disciples to Growth and Development. Started throwing protests uh, for for after school activities that were being canceled. Um, just um doing a bunch of stuff charity wise. He was doing his thing while he was in the bank. All of front though all up front. In 1995, he is convicted again while he was serving his 150 to 200 year sentence for still being the leader of the Gangster Disciples. They said this man, when he was in a supermax prison, he was getting luxury meals. He had his own personal, uh, personal cell. Like, he was literally those dudes, like, you, I don't, uh, what was that one joint, um, they joined with Jet Li and, and uh, DMX when DMX used to go to the prison and the bull had stakes and all that. That was Larry Hoover. You, That's Larry Hoover right now. My man probably sitting in the cell that looked better than most of our house. Most of our houses. You feel what I'm saying? And they, it, it popped into the feds mind. Let's tap the conversation. Came about, oh, you still running stuff. They run a five-year undercover investigation. Get enough evidence. And boom, he's convicted again. It was actual gangster disciples. Actual informants from the gangster disciples that came out and said none of those uh none of the funds that were that were raised from them charitable events were given back to people of need. None of it. That money was used for guns. That money was used for drugs. Guns that are being used in Chicago right now. Guns that are being used in Detroit right now. Guns that are used in Indiana right now. You feel what I'm saying? It mind boggles me when I looked into Larry Hoover's history. That you had Drake and Kanye doing a free Larry Hoover concert. Bro, this man is the leader of the Gangsta Disciples. Y'all want their Messiah to come home? Did y'all Are y'all looking into Chicago right now? Hold up, let me get y'all some stats. According to Cook County data, in 2021, Chicago amassed 834 murders. The most since 1995 when... Conveniently, Larry Hoover was convicted for still running the Gangster Disciples while being in the Supermax prison. And that year, they had 828 murders. The year after Larry Hoover was convicted, in 1974, in 1974 in Chicago, 
they had 970 murders. Bro, please, please, please go out and explain why y'all doing a free Larry Hoover concert because it seems like manipulation to get more young black people killed. That man ain't stopping press and play. That man ain't stopping leading the, the gangster disciples. That man is a leader. Now, as far as the street legacy, the streets is with Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover ain't no rat. Larry Hoover ain't never had no smut on his name to where it was like he killed people over stupid stuff like chicks or dumb shit. Like, uh, I can't wrap my head around how people was really defending Alpo Martinez. You dig what I'm saying? But Larry Hoover was never that. But then you really turn back around and you think about the last person I just did, uh, BMF's own Big Meech. Big Meech went out his way not to drop bodies. And he amassed $270 million in just the five years that the feds was watching him. So it's shown that you can easily get money in the streets without dropping bodies left and right. These dudes like to drop bodies, man. These dudes are violent individuals. You know what I'm saying? We can't keep apologizing for people because of the color of their skin. You That's like, that, that's really like giving the Nazis Hitler back to say free Larry Hoover. Bro, they got 15,000 Gangster Disciple members across 15 states. Come on, bro. That man is a, 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 a scary leader. You feel what I'm saying? My personal opinion, he got to rock out. You think about the, the thousands and thousands of murders that happened under his reign? Come on, dog. The little bit of time that you talking about your grandkids ain't get to see Larry Hoover. How many people ain't get to see their dad because of Larry Hoover? Ain't get to see their mama? How many people ain't get to grow up because of Larry Hoover press and play? Or, or calling a play. Like, come on, dog. Let's be logical and let's be fair, man. The streets is with Larry Hoover. But Larry Hoover needs to stay in that Supermax in, in, in Florence, Colorado. And that's a fact, bro. Free Big Meech. The streets is with Larry Hoover. But Larry Hoover needs to stay where he at. And them GDs in Chicago don't need no more motivation. Nobody in Chicago need no more motivation to drop bodies, bro. Please stop killing people in Chicago. Y'all talk about he gonna come out and be a, a a gang activist. Come on, bro. My man been gang banging from nineteen seven from the nineteen sixties to well known into the late nineteen nineties for thirty plus years. That man is still the leader of the gangster disciples and does not deserve his freedom. In my humble opinion, the streets is with him. He not no rat. He not no nut. But he is a violent individual that should not come home to a already turbulent city in chicago you dig what i'm saying let me know what y'all think the violent street legacy of larry hoover larry hoover is the is the pablo escobar of the united states you dig what i'm saying hey this episode six this episode six and i forgot i did larry hoover let me know what y'all think like comment share subscribe y'all know what it is Mizzy world entertainment topic tuesday the street legacy of larry hoover gang